As you may know from my previous videos, dry eye is a multifactorial condition. And based on the TFOS dues to study, dry eye may be a lack of tear production, evaporation, or a combination of both. We also have many diagnostic instruments to help us pinpoint the cause of the type of dry eye causing our patient's problems. Diagnostics are also crucial in determining the progress on particular treatments we have chosen for that type of dry eye. In this video, we will focus on the Oculus Keratograph 5M and some of the ways we use it in diagnostics for dry eyes and monitoring our treatments. Hey there, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. This channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. Once a poorly understood condition, the understanding of dry eyes has rapidly evolved over the past 25 years. Much thanks is given to the diligent research in the field, but also to the diagnostic equipment that has evolved from such research. As research continues to grow in our understanding of dry eye, so will diagnostic technology. The Oculus Keratograph 5M is one such device that has evolved from years of research. It is a crucial aspect in helping me manage my patients' dry eyes, who I have re recommended specific treatments for their type of dry eye, and diagnosing and most importantly educating them on their condition. Although it isn't sufficient to rely strictly on the features of the Keratograph 5M when managing dry eyes, it does offer several diagnostic tools that are necessary during management and treatment of the disease. I would like to highlight many of its valuable components. Number one, mybography. Infrared lighting helps us view the meibomian glands or the oil glands in the upper and lower lids or tarsals that are responsible for the oily and lipid layer that helps prevent evaporation of our tear film. According to a study by Lemp et al, 86% of dry eye cases are a result of meibomian gland dysfunction. Many chronic cases result in atrophy or a drop out of these glands resulting in dry eye disease. Now, mybography allows us to visualize these glands and help us diagnose diagnose MGD based on the structural changes of the meibomian glands. The awesome thing about the Keratograph 5M is it has baseline photos of basically healthy glands all the way to really, really bad dropout here. And we have the freedom to basically match up exactly where the patient's glands are in relation to the baseline. It really gives that shock factor to that patient and it really shows them exactly what their eyes look like. Number two, lid margin and lashes. This is a great way to photo document structural changes of the lids such as scalloping and thickening or keratinization. Telangiectasias or spider veins in chronic inflammatory dry eye really show up using this feature. It is also great at documenting bacterial buildup along the lashes. These are known as collarettes or demodex infestations and these build up look almost like cylindrical areas along the bases of the lashes and the exit points of the oil along the lid margins by looking at the thickening and color of secretions. Number three, tear breakup time and the non-invasive keratograph tear breakup time. Tear breakup time is a traditional objective measurement of tear film stability. We use a yellow dye called sodium fluorescein to highlight your tear film and then the clinician counts the time it takes to notice the moment the tear breaks up or when the patient is unable to keep their eye open. The Keratograph 5M has video capabilities to record this process of tear breakup. So you can go back and count or re analyze it again if necessary. However, critics of this method will mention that the fluorescein dye can actually destabilize the tear film, giving you an inaccurate perception of the tear film stability, making it less accurate to that of the non-invasive tear breakup test. In the DUS2 study, this method should only be used if one does not have a means to measure the non-invasive tear breakup time. The non-invasive keratograph tear breakup time is an objective way to measure the true stability of your tear film. It will identify the time at which the tear film breaks, where and how rapidly it occurs on the cornea. The keratograph 5M does this by identifying distortions in the projected mires on the corneal tear film. The tear breakup time is one of the many repeatable and quantifiable methods that we use to track the progress of a certain treatment. Number four, interferometry or the lipid layer tear film dynamic. One of the huge issues in dry eye disease is that individuals' lipid layer or the 
fat part of their tear film evaporates really quickly because of its poor quality. We're looking for more color. It almost looks like oil on a, on a, on a hot pavement and what we're looking for is more color. The more color there is, it will signify a more lipid and a healthier oily layer. So we're looking for the darker reds, the purples, and the blues. Whereas the whites and the yellow colors represent a deficiency of these lipids. Therefore, the tear has more debris and is a little bit more viscous or thick. Number five, tear meniscus height. Tear volume measurement uses virtual calipers to measure the height of fluid along the lower lid margin. A very low tear meniscus height represents aqueous deficient dry eye. Likewise, if there is a patient with aqueous deficiency, they may actually tear excessively. This can then artificially increase the tear meniscus height to greater values. Now a normal tear meniscus height is anywhere between 0.2 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters. With the Keratograph 5 software I am measuring right underneath in the center and then I work my way out towards the limbal area and then measure it right along the outer edges because of course the tear meniscus height does vary um, depending on where you are along that lid margin number six conjunctival folding. Now there are three conditions that involve conjunctival folding. One of them includes lip coughs or known as lid parallel conjunctival folds, conjunctival flaps, and conjunctival chalasis. These three conditions have similarities and all describe the redundant non edematous or non-swelling mass of conjunctiva, often in the form of a large or multiple large folds. Lip coughs are observed adjacent to the lower lid margin, whereas conjunctival flaps and conjunctival chalasis can occur anywhere on the bulbar conjunctiva. This condition is one of the most common underdiagnosed and misdiagnosed ocular surface disease. Many clinicians do not recognize the significance of the conjunctival findings and are therefore not actively looking for it underneath the microscope. The presence of these folds can cause many of the symptoms of dry eye and in its most severe form can at times block the natural drainage of our eye called the puncta. This can lead to later symptoms of excessive watery eyes known as epiphora. Now unfortunately this is actually where a patient is most often first diagnosed at the later stage of this disease. Number seven, bulbar and limbal redness. This is an objective way to quantify and document eye redness. A lot of times in dry eye, people do complain of red eyes. And again, the reason for that is because of inflammation and a lot of allergens inside the eyes. Bulbar and limbal redness are evaluated in the temporal and nasal areas of the eye. Everything is based on baseline photos in their database and then graded from them. By no means is this 100% accurate as some Sometimes my own clinical judgment can be very different to what the software suggests. Regardless, it is an excellent way to document the initial redness of the eye and then comparing to it down the road when we do a progress check. Number seven, topography. The Keratograph 5M also has topography capabilities necessary for certain corneal diseases such as keratoconus and contact lens fitting. Now I chose to go with the Oculus 5M Lite where the only software is specific for dry eye. And the reason for that is, as you probably know, I use the Medmont E300 topographer, which you can learn about in my previous videos. There are many other ocular surface analysis systems out there on the market, and I'm just sharing what I happen to have in my clinic. There are excellent systems that do very similar acquisitions, coupled with very user-friendly and intuitive software, such as the Hydra from Clarion Medical Technology. Now, whatever system your eye doctor has or chooses to use down the road will provide invaluable information across the board. And heck, I used to use my cell phone to capture images just eight months ago, and it still did wonders for me educating my patients. Pictures are certainly worth a thousand words in the field of dry eye disease, and the Oculus Keratograph 5M has made it easy, time efficient, and with high quality images to show my patients. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed watching some of the great features the Keratograph 5M uses in helping me manage dry eye disease. I also hope you gain more insight into the clinical aspect of dry eye. If you look forward to learning more in my future videos on everything dry eye, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also click the notification bell to receive reminders on my new YouTube video every Thursday. Thanks for stopping by. Take care of your eyes and we'll see you next time education and treatments in dry eye. Mm -hmm.
the advances of research and the understanding of dry eye. Do that again. Scalloping and th uh, 